Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Striped bass. They're a fascinating fish to catch on a fly. That's a pretty fish. I've been in love with this species for over 30 years, and for good reason. Welcome to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. I love striped bass. Oh, I see him. They're aggressive. That was exciting. Fight hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are found in all different kinds of habitats. They just, they just look like a fish is supposed to look, don't they? They're just the perfect fish. In this show, you're going to see all about catching striped bass. Oh, yeah, nice fish. That fish has already refused that fly. You're going to have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. Oscar Blues Brewery. Stripers are a fly rod fish for the common man. Although they can be caught from a boat far offshore, they're just as common close to shore, even in popular swimming beaches, in just yeah, a few feet long. of water. It's possible to catch saltwater striped bass easily from Canada's maritime provinces through parts of the Gulf Coast. And they've even been introduced on the Pacific Coast. Although striped bass have been introduced into large freshwater lakes, that's a topic for another show. Stripers are a great fish for the fly rod because they occupy many shallow water habitats, sometimes in just a few feet of water right up to the shoreline. It's like if you look over, it's a, it's a foot deep. Yeah. Although you can catch striped bass as far north as New Brunswick and as far south as the Gulf Coast of Texas, they're really the premier game fish from the Chesapeake Bay north to Maine. You can even catch them in New York Harbor, right in the heart of the city. Striped bass are a migratory fish. They winter and spawn in the spring in large brackish water estuaries like the Hudson River, Roanoke River, and Chesapeake Bay. And then they migrate to their summer feeding grounds. They grow fat on bait fish, squid, eels, crabs, shrimp, worms, and just about anything else they can get in their mouths. They arrive in their summer feeding grounds, sometime between April and June, depending on location, returning to their wintering and spawning grounds in the fall. Oh, wow, nice fish. Striped bass seem to feed 24 hours a day. Take you can catch off. them in bright sunlight the in the middle of the day. Beautiful striped bass in prime condition. But you can also catch them in the dead of night. It all depends on tide and water temperatures. They like moving water that traps bait fish and other prey. And whether they feed heavier in the incoming or outgoing tide is totally location dependent. They prefer water temperatures from 60 to 70 degrees. So in colder offshore waters, they might be most active during the day, but in the warmer waters of midsummer, the best time to catch them close to shore might be during the night or at dawn. Oh, he just, he's oh. on it. Oh! He <laughs> just finding striped bass is more than half the battle. It's a big ocean, and they're on the move constantly, moving with the abundance of prey. It helps to have an understanding of their habits and prey species, but sometimes the best intelligence is to talk to local anglers or hang around a local tackle shop. Stripers aren't always where they're supposed to be. Striped bass love current because it brings them food. Sometimes you'll find them hanging in the current of an estuary or channel, waiting for crabs, shrimp, and bait fish to drift by, feeding much like trout. Although they may change their positions in the current when the tide changes. 
Just because you find them in one place on the incoming tide doesn't mean they'll be in the same place on the outgoing tide. It all depends on where they can find the most food. Ah, that's the kind we like to see. And I'm just gonna slide them gently up on this grass here in the shallower water. And there we go. And now we can just gently slide that beautiful fish back in there. In the hypothetical estuary shown in this diagram, stripers ride the incoming tide following the deeper channels. As the tide rises in the estuary, they'll move into shallower water looking for food. They'll be especially abundant in places where landforms constrict the current and form an ice channel. On the outgoing tide, many of the fish that were way up inside the estuary will either move into the deeper channels or they'll leave the estuary entirely. They'll position themselves along the beach or offshore in places where the outgoing current brings a rich food supply of the estuary out into the open ocean. Offshore rips are common places to find striped bass when fishing from a boat. These features are formed when tidal currents in deeper water bump up against shallow bars. Stripers typically hang just on the down current side of a rip where baitfish and squid are washed over the edge of the bar. But sometimes large fish hang in the smooth water on the upcurrent end of the rip. If you see any obstructions like rocks on the bottom, these will be sure to hold fish because the bait concentrates near them. You may have to get very close to the rip before you get a strike. These are dangerous places and require careful boat handling, especially in really strong rips. About the opposite kind of habitat, one that stripers seem to prefer equally as well, are inshore flats, vast expanses of sand that are ideal habitats for bait fish, crabs, shrimp, and other aquatic life. Instead of hanging in the current, here stripers prowl singly or in schools on the lookout for food. Feeding here is much more subtle and you seldom see stripers crashing on the surface. Instead, you sight fish them the same way you would permit or bonefish, spotting fish or seeing them flash in the water as they turn on their sides to capture their prey. Here you can chase them on foot or from a shallow draft boat. Stripers will enter salt water in brackish ponds and rivers. Here they may cruise open water or prowl close to bars or structure looking for prey. It pays to look everywhere for cruising fish or swirls or wakes because you never know where you might find them. Oh, there's one. He's actually taking line. Whoa, I may have to put this fish on the reel. And they're eating these worms that are coming to the surface and uh, it's just like trout fishing. When you're fishing an ocean beach, it looks intimidating at first, and it can be. The beach all looks the same, but once you really look at it, you'll see bars and indentations and places where stripers can corral bait. For instance, I've got a deep slot here in front of me. There's a sandbar down there that sticks out quite a ways, and there's a sandbar over there that sticks out quite a ways, and this is a nice indentation where bass could corral bait fish, so I'm gonna try it here. Look for birds dipping into the water, which could indicate feeding fish. But don't neglect birds just sitting on the beach or just offshore. They may know that stripers are nearby, but just not feeding at the moment. Often stripers are found around deep water humps or other structures. These can be tough fish on a fly rod, and sometimes they're just too deep to tempt on a fly. But your chances of catching a really large one are best in deep water. If you see them on a depth finder, or you have other intelligence that tells you stripers might be around, like a lot of boats concentrated in one spot. And if they're in 30 feet of water or less, you may be able to catch them on a fast sinking line. I don't know. You know, I think he took it sinking. I think you're gonna be uh, surprised. Yeah? I think so. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I think that fish right there's touching 30 inches. You're kidding me. No, I think he is. Wow. I could be wrong, but I seen a, I seen a flash. Yeah, I saw a flash, too. 
When a fish sounds like this, you want to try to put side pressure on them and not lift straight up. And be careful when the line goes under the boat. Whoa, Mike, you might be right. No, I'm, I know I'm right. I've seen them. When a fish is right below the boat like this, you want to try to keep that rod from gumming above your waist. So you want to give a quick lift and then reel, and then a quick lift and then reel, and never bring that rod up too high. So the fly rod just isn't meant when a fish is right under the boat to be brought right up here over your head. Another thing you shouldn't do when fighting a decent sized fish like this, that we all do and we shouldn't, is to put your hand on the rod here to get extra leverage because a fly rod isn't meant to be flexed from here. It's meant to be flexed all the way down into the handle. And we all do it, but you shouldn't because you can break a rod that way. Notice how I'm turning them cool side up. to side to disorient them, tire them out. Oh, you put on that, you put on that little dog. Yeah, I put on a little surf candy. Caught this fish on a very small, very small bait fish. I mean, talk about, uh, you know, big fish, big fly, but sometimes just a little, that's the kind of bait fish he's eating. Another technique for locating fish over deep water is to tease them in with a hookless plug and then toss a fly to them as they get closer to the boat. As much as we love sight fishing, sometimes in striper fishing, you got a blind fish. We're here in a rocky bay. Stripers are known to pass through here and feed in here. Lots of rocks on the bottom, rocks on the shore, and we're just throwing in all directions and stripping it back. It's only about 18 feet of water, so we know with these sinking lines that the fish are gonna see our flies if they're around. So we're just gonna prospect. Stripers also congregate around jetties that extend out from the shoreline, which, like other good places, harbor schools of bait fish and other prey. As I said, more than half the battle is finding striped bass. Smart anglers move around a lot. If you don't see them feeding, if you don't catch one, or if you don't see any sign of fish, move on. You'll find them eventually. When we return, I'll give you some tips on what kinds of tackle you'll need to catch these wonderful fish. Tackle for striped bass is pretty simple, and if you fish for freshwater bass or small pike or other inshore saltwater species, you may already have the right stuff. I think the best all-around striper rod is a nine weight. Stripers can be quite large, and it's nice to have a nine weight to handle them, but it's even more important because the flies can be pretty big and you'll likely be dealing with wind, so you'll struggle less with a bigger rod and a heavier line. If you're fishing the flats, or mostly for smaller stripers called schoolies, an eight weight might be okay. And if you fish from a boat and you're fishing deep with sinking lines, a 10 weight might be a better tool for handling fish in deep water and for throwing those big sinking lines. Reels for stripers should have a smooth drag Beautiful. and you should be able to hold your fly line at about 150 He's yards stuck. of backing. Most stripers don't get into the backing, but a large fish and heavy current will make you glad you had that extra insurance. Stripers are not speed demons though, so you don't need as strong a drag as you might for some other species like tarpon. For a lot of your fishing, you can just get away with a floating line, particularly if you're fishing near shore. If you need to get a little bit deeper, you can put on longer leader and a weighted fly, but a floating line is gonna be a go-to line for striper fishing. Now, if you're fishing deep channels, or you're fishing offshore and you need to get to deep fish, you're gonna want a full sinking or a depth charge line just to get down to the fish when they're not coming close to the surface. And then the intermediate line, is a really good line for times when you don't want to fish right on the surface, but you don't want your, your fly line on top. You want it to ride a little bit below the surface of the waves. So an intermediate line is very useful as well. So those are the three lines you really need for striped bass fishing. There you go. Beautiful. Now he's stuck. Oh, there we go. Nice job. This is gonna take a while. This is a pretty good fish. We just found a 
big school, huge school of quite large stripers. Just came in in the warm water and uh, they're, milling, they're milling around. Stripers are kind of just dogged battlers. They're not spectacular. A big one will run a lot of line. Um, big ones usually roll when they take the fly. The big ones will usually come up and, and roll on the surface. That, oh, I'm into my backing. Guys. Ah, you stuck them nice. Ah, there we go. Definitely my nicest bass of the year. And it just started. It just started. Oh! Striper leaders are simple. You don't need a bite guard or shock tippet, so a nine foot leader in 12 to 20 pound tippet will do you just fine with floating and intermediate lines. Don't go shorter than nine feet, especially on the flats or when fish are in shallow water because stripers are easily spooked by a fly line landing on top of them. For sinking lines, just a four foot piece of 16 or 20 pound tippet is all you need. I also carry wire because you'll often find sharp toothed bluefish mixed in with stripers, the and they're a here. fun and worthy game fish. Besides flies, leaders, and tippet, you want to carry pliers or forceps for removing hooks and for tightening knots, a hook sharpener, especially if you fish around rocks, snips for cutting line. And if you fish the surf, a stripping basket for keeping your line in order is almost essential. Without one, your line will get tangled around your feet or in seaweed along the beach. Plus, you can move from one spot to the next without the need to reel in your line. Because stripers are often found in water hovering around 60 degrees, if you fish from shore, you may also want a pair of waders, especially in the early part of the season. Later in the year, you can wait for them with quick dry pants and a pair of flats boots, or even barefoot and a pair of shorts. You'll probably need something to carry your tackle. A backpack, sling bag, or chest pack will work just fine. Here's Pete Kutzer from the Orvis Fly Fishing Schools, who will give us some great instruction on how to fine tune our double haul, a very important cast to learn for distance casting and for dealing with the wind. Hi, I'm Pete Kutzer with the Orvis Fly Fishing Schools. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we can fine tune that double haul and make it a little bit easier. When we're making this double haul, we wanna make sure that we have a good cast first. That's the most important thing. A good cast is gonna get that fly out a lot easier. And if we try to incorporate a double haul to a bad cast, it's not gonna go very nicely. So we wanna work on that good cast and we wanna look at how we make that good cast. I like to use a little bit of my forearm and a little bit of my wrist. I'm gonna start by bringing this rod back with my forearm, then applying a wrist flick. That wrist flick gets that line to jump out. A lot of people have a tendency to use a little too much wrist. All I wanna do is just straighten that wrist out. Notice when I start, my wrist is slightly bent. The rod's kind of in line with my forearm. Now when I make that flick, my wrist is nice and straight right here, and that's it. We're gonna start with that nice back cast, and I like to lay down the ground when I'm practicing my double haul. Then, I'm gonna make that nice cast on the forward cast, trying to get that line as straight as possible. If you see that line going nice and straight behind you, nice and straight in front of you, now it's time to introduce that double haul. To do this double haul, when we make this cast, notice how I make a flick at the end right there, and then I come forward and make another little flick here on the forward cast. If I take my wrist out of the picture and just haul, there, and there, Notice I didn't use any wrist, I get the same results. The wrist flick and the haul do the same thing. We wanna put those two together. When you practice, haul, but then we have to slide back. We have to reposition to set up for that forward cast haul. If we can get that practice down one side at a time, we're gonna work on a nice progressive method to really get this cast happening a lot sooner and a lot easier. Practice one side at a time, laying that line down on the grass behind you, laying it down in front of you. Once you get comfortable, then try to pick it up a little bit and just lay the line down on your forward cast. If you get comfortable there, maybe come a little higher. Comfortable there, a little bit higher, 
and then you can add a little bit of shooting line, start getting a little bit more distance. This double haul makes a good cast better. It doesn't make a bad cast good. Keep that in mind, but practice it, and I'm sure it'll help you catch more fish. Striper flies run the gamut, and that's what makes it a lot of fun. Um, stripers are opportunistic feeders, and at times they'll eat just about anything. But there are times when they get pretty selective, and it might be necessary for you to match whatever they're feeding on. And if you don't know what to throw at stripers, when in doubt, throw them a clouser minnow. It's like the woolly bugger of saltwater fly fishing. One of the most fun ways to catch a striper is on a surface fly. Even a tiny schoolie will smash a surface fly and it looks like a fish that's three or four times its size. Uh, I really like the gurgler. Uh, it's easy to cast, it's easy to tie, and it pushes a lot of water, makes a lot of noise, but you can also work it very quietly. But uh, standard poppers and crease flies will also work. The best times to try surface flies are on calm days, especially early in the morning, or when stripers are feeding aggressively oh. near the surface on baby. First cast, yeah. Nice. Probably your bread and butter striper flies are gonna be your medium sized, you know, about that big, medium sized uh, bait fish imitations, such as the Clouser minnow, the Lefties deceiver, or for broader profile fish, uh, one of the EP type flies. Try to match the uh, profile of the bait fish that the fish are feeding on, if you can see what they're feeding on. If the bait fish are long and skinny, then use a fly that's long and skinny, like an epoxy fly. If the bait fish are more broad, deep profile, wide, then try something more like an EP fly, something with a broader, heavier profile. There may be times in striper fishing, particularly when they're feeding on herring or bunker, when they're gonna want a big fly, and especially big stripers may ignore anything else. And sometimes you have to go to absolutely gigantic flies when they're feeding on bunker. They're not easy to cast and they're not easy to tie, but there are times when you might need one. If you're going striper fishing, don't leave home without your bonefish flies and your permit flies. Stripers eat a lot of crabs and they eat a lot of shrimp, particularly when they're in shallow water on the flats. So take some crab flies with you in various weights and sizes and take some shrimp imitations. Come on, he's eating he's it. He's eating it. He ate it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> 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 He ate twice! Oh, God! <laughs> okay, now we're all geared up and ready to go. When we return, I'll give you some tips on how to present your flies in various scenarios. Techniques for fishing stripers are not much different from trout streamer techniques or fishing for other saltwater species. As in most types of fishing, be prepared to switch your retrieves or presentation if what you're doing doesn't seem to work. Besides varying your retrieves, sometimes introducing a pause will also draw strikes. Here, Captain Aaron Cascone describes the various strips he uses in very colorful terms. The first one I'm gonna do is the, uh, like an old man walks up a stairs. So if I'm two-handing it, it's really, really, really slow. Sometimes this will get it. If I'm going to do this strip one-handed, it'll just be a draw, a real slow draw. Next. It's a slow strip, the fly comes back slow, but it's what we call milk in the mouse. Your fly's moving slow, but it's a very fast strip, but I'm only trying to take maybe one or two inches at a time. 
And keeping in mind, you want your rod tip in the water or you lose the action out of this. If I'm gonna do this two-handed, I go like this. Only taking about an inch in at a time. And sometimes, we like a really fast strip. And that, if one-handed, is just gonna be or two-handed, little jerky, but big pulls. And then sometimes you wanna go, but you can only do two-handed, is super fast and steady. You can't do this one-handed. Very rarely will I strip like this takes a lot of energy and you got to cast a lot. When fishing for stripers in the current, it's especially important to be flexible. If you don't see any fish feeding, try stripping your fly across the current as you would in a trout stream. To get deeper, cast your line upstream and mend to get the fly even deeper. You might also try just swinging the fly as you would for steelhead. As in steelhead fishing, it's an easy way to cover a lot of water until you find fish. And don't rule out a dead drifted crab, shrimp, or bait fish in the current. Throw a weighted fly up current on a floating line and watch for the line to stop. Strip line just enough to keep tension on the line and make the fly move occasionally. So that was with upstream, upstream cast against the current and just a slow strip every once in a while, just a little bump to make the fly move a little bit to look like something alive. Whoa, frisky fish for a striper. Um, so it was just uh, up current and then led on a floating line, let that fly come down and just every once in a while, give it enough of a strip to move the fly where you feel the line tight. And um, that works quite well in a current, particularly now as the current is starting to slow down. Nice fat fish, would you consider a, a little bit bigger schoolie? Not a, not a great big striped bass, but a big schoolie. And uh, a lot of fun on a light fly rod. Like trout, Stripers will be found in places where the current is moderate, but out of the main flow. So look for drop-offs or soft edges along the main current. In offshore rips, try either a surface fly or bait fish imitation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fish through this rip. The boat's gonna drift through the rip, and what I'm gonna do is throw up current, throw away from the rip, let my line start to sink, then as the line comes around, I'm gonna feed more line, let some slack out, let that line get nice and deep, and then when I feel the line get tight below me or down current of me, then I'm gonna start my strips, and hopefully that'll be right when we get to the edge of the rip. One of the things about fishing a rip is the first time through, you never know how your line's gonna behave, how fast the current's going in relation to the boat. So you have to experiment with different angles, but the idea is to try to get that sinking line down as close to the bottom as you can, unless you're seeing fish moving on the surface. Oh, odd. Nice fish, huh? That's what we're looking for. On the flats, your strategy should be much different, but be prepared to experiment. Waiting or in a boat, try to get the sun to your back to reduce glare. Look for grayish blue shapes that are constantly on the move. Be especially careful not to drop your fly line on top of fish, as this is almost guaranteed to spook them. We'll find another one. You know, my very favorite way of fishing for stripers is on the flats. On a sunny day like this, the fish are in shallow water. You see everything, you see the fish chase your fly, refuse it, it's heart pounding. And a good day is maybe one fish. One of the things you wanna remember is the way of your fly is very important. I was fishing this relatively heavy fly with heavy eyes. 
it was spooking the fish because it was landing too hard, and it was going right to the bottom and picking up weeds and spooked another fish. So what I've done is gone to a much lighter fly with very sparse with smaller eyes, this little clouser minnow. Often the best approach, especially with a crab or shrimp imitation, is to estimate where the fish are heading and lead the fish by enough distance so your fly gets to the bottom before they reach it. This will depend on the depth of the water, how fast the fish are moving, and the weight of your fly. Just before the fish approach your fly, try giving it a slight twitch. Often the fish will jump on your fly when you do this, but if they don't, move the fly in short bumps like a crab trying to get away. You need to experiment with your retrieves and you never know what'll interest the fish the most. The most unexpected things can happen on the flats, all in plain sight, as you see here. And he wanted that fly, didn't he? Man, he wanted that fly. Odds are that thing's in his corner of his mouth. Yeah, he's, he's probably still, pretty well hooked. It's a shaking. small hook, too. It's a little, it's a little it's, size. You ain't straightening it out with 12 pound. It's a size six uh, black bonefish hook. I like those black hooks because yeah. they don't shine. And I only put one strand of flash on this clouser. It's a little nicer. Whoa. Get in there. We need a bigger net. <sighs> If they're any bigger, we do it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great fish. Nice fish. In estuaries and salt ponds, you may see fish cruising the flats, or they may be in the current. First, look for fish feeding on the surface. When they're chasing bait fish, the boils will be quite splashy. Sometimes fish will be cruising, looking for worms that swim on the surface, especially in the evening. These will look more like boils or trout rises. If you see fish feeding on the surface, don't automatically assume a fast retrieve will get you a strike. Oh, there's one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's actually taking line. So bass eat all kinds of things. Yeah, they eat bait fish, they eat crabs, they eat shrimp, but they also eat worms. And we're here in this quiet pond and they're eating these worms that are coming to the surface. And um, it's just like trout fishing. Casting to a rise, boom, bass takes it. Pretty cool stuff. Got some sea lice on them, just came in. Some stripers, especially the bigger ones, may be holding in deeper water, waiting for dead or crippled bait fish to fall through the water column. So even if the fish seem to be feeding aggressively, sometimes letting the fly sink and moving it slowly will pay off. If you don't see any fish feeding, then try blind fishing over channels or near deeper banks. In deep water, you'll need time to let the line and the fly sink to the right depth. Cast up current and let the line sink. You can also feed line into the current if there's moving water to get a longer retrieve and to get the fly deeper. Wait until all the slack is out of your line until you begin your retrieve as that's as deep as you're gonna get. If you feel you aren't getting deep enough, strip line off your reel and feed more line into the drift or switch to a fly with heavier weight. I find that because you're really trying to grab the attention of a fish in deep water, a relatively fast strip catches their attention better. And when fishing deep, to help more with catching their eye, a bigger, bulkier fly will often produce better than a more subtle pattern. Fishing the surf is a whole nother discipline. At first, it looks intimidating, and if the surf is strong enough, it can be wet and dangerous. Here, my friend Captain Aaron Cascone talks about his strategy for fishing the beach, and it's a good one. So when I'm fishing the beach, one of the things I see people not doing is moving enough. It's like they go to a spot and then they, they just 
post up there and they don't they don't really move. I'm typically always moving. You know, I see everybody lined up on the beach and they, they never move. So I usually I'll take a cast and then I take a step over or sometimes I never even stop walking. I'm just constantly slowly sidestepping and cast, sidestep, cast, sidestep, you know, cast, sidestep and continue along that. And then I'm changing my strip constantly. Every time I take a step, I change my strip and I go through a handful of different strips until I find the right one. And then I keep moving. And I like to move, if I know fish are coming in the beach or down the beach or whatever, I like to move into the tide. So whichever way the tide's going, I like to move, work my way into it. And then when I find the fish, I keep working a little ways, but if I don't get them again, I start working back even faster. Because a lot of times the fish will come down, run down the beach and keep going, or sometimes they'll keep doing loops. So I'm constantly moving, unless there's a defined piece of structure I'm trying to fish that I know is good, but just a barren, sandy beach. You know, those fish aren't sitting typically in, on one portion of that beach unless there's a deep hole or something like that. I'll target those first. But even within there, I'll make little adjustments. And sometimes being 20 feet to the right or left is all the difference in the world. You know, and then constantly changing up your retrieve. You know, and changing. I change flies. Just keep changing them. I usually got a handful of patterns that I'm, I know might work with the given forage around but I'll go through them because, you know, even at certain times of the night or as the light conditions changes, the, the fish will want different things. Try to anticipate the waves and cast just before the last wave in a set hits you. Usually waves come in sets of three. Cast over the top of that last wave and hopefully you'll have a brief period when you can control your fly before the next big wave hits. It also pays to take a few steps back after each cast to tighten your line so that as soon as you begin to strip, you're tight to the fly. If there's a current running parallel to the shore, try casting your fly up tide instead of perpendicular to the shoreline, then cast one down current. Sometimes the bass prefer one orientation over another. It's also a place where you wanna cast as far as you can because if you're stranded on shore, often the bass seem to be just beyond your reach. Of course, having a stripping basket to keep your line under control will help your ability to shoot more line. And it also will just help make sure your casting game is as good as it can get. This is one of the few places in fly fishing where being able to cast a long line can really give you an edge. Finally, if you decide to explore the exciting and mysterious world of striped bass fishing at night, I have a few pieces of advice. First, you want a floating line or an intermediate at the heaviest. Your fly has to be close to the surface for night feeding stripers to see it. A fly that wakes in the surface, one that just barely floats like a gurgler or crease fly can sometimes draw their attention. And the most important piece of advice I can give you is to retrieve your fly slowly. A fast retrieve seldom works at night and often you wanna just barely keep tight to your fly, almost a dead drift. Listen for stripers feeding or look for feeding boils in the moonlight or just blind cast into an area known to hold stripers and wait for the solid pull of a fish in the darkness. Doesn't get any better than that. I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope you picked up some great tips on striped bass fishing. Striped bass are an amazing game fish. They're almost everywhere along the East Coast and they're accessible to anyone on a fly rod, whether you're from a boat or from shore. Whoa, yeah, baby. Woo. Mm. On a pretty small fly. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing, Adipose Boatworks, Global Rescue, Trout Unlimited. 
Oscar Blues Brewery.